Right, we spend an awful lot of time worrying about how to lay out our source code. Here's a simple programming exercise, you've probably seen it before, this is a fairly normal way to lay it out. But consider all the things I could have changed about this layout. I could use a different amount of indenting. Uh, I could put spaces between the keywords and the parens. Uh, I could put spaces immediately inside the parens. Uh, I could remove the other spaces inside the expressions. Um, that that post-fix if, I, I, I could put it, split it across two lines. Or I could re-express it the other way round with the AND operator. Um, then some styles call for every close brace to have its own line, and some for every brace to have its own line. And once you're doing that, the braces can have their own data. And then there's this one. <laughs> <laughs> so C -Pan writes this style, he calls it Polish style. <laughs> <laughs> These semicolons at the beginning of the line act like a sigil. <laughs> I'm not playing. Um, and then there are some people who just like the stuff as much as yeah. <laughs> But the less said about those perverts, the better. <laughs> How should this be laid out? Actually, it doesn't matter, because that's not the true form of the program. This is. This is, <laughs> the this is what Perl uses internally. Now, this one's a bit long, and I couldn't show it on a single site. Let's have a look at a, a small piece of it. This comes from that post fix if all the end. Either version of it produces exactly the same piece of octree. We've got the modular operator here, we've got a comparison, we've got a print, and we've got a conditional there. Uh, and uh, so this represents the, the, uh, the program in an abstract form. And uh, every version of the FizzBuzz program that I, I showed you produces exactly the same octree, with one exception that uh, up here the, the octree actually embeds a little bit of information about the, the line numbers in the original source, which is great if you need to refer back to the source. But it doesn't matter at all if you <coughs> don't care about the original source. And guess what? Perl doesn't care about the original source. It doesn't execute the source, it executes the opt. <coughs> so Perl doesn't care, and neither should you. This, this is how you get hold of an opt tree. This is how you find the true form of your program once you've produced the um, near shadow of it. And um, you can do more interesting things with it than this. If you use this B bytecode module, you can uh, store the, op uh, the, the entire op tree in the form of bytecode, which you put in a file, and then you can execute it from the bytecode. The bytecode uh, reconstructs the op tree. And um, you, so you can, you can pull the op tree out of the bytecode like this, uh, and you, you can go further. Within the bytecode, you can use the D parts to produce human readable sources that corresponds to it. Um, so now, we, don't, we have no need for the original source. You should all be editing your code this way. When you need to edit it, use D pearls to generate human repo source. And in that, use the code to take back the and delete the source. When you're actually editing it. However, there's a problem with this. Um, this tool chain has suffered quite a lot of bit rot. I actually had to use um, Perl 5.8 to produce <laughs> to achieve the things that I've shown on the slides. Uh, and, and then there's a problem that uh, BD Perls depends on certain non-functional parts of, of the octree that um, B bytecode doesn't preserve. So the two don't get on. Occasionally they'll lose. So be careful if you're going to try that. So this is all the parts. We need uh, BD Perls to be a lot more robust. There are things that get confused even when you're not doing bytecode. We need the bytecode stuff to actually work. Wow. Wow. Make, this, make this tool chain work, and then we can all break free of the tyranny of source code. Thank you. <laughs>